Do you consider computers to be a modern invention? What about calendars that can be adjusted from one year to the next? Or sound chambers that can magnify what someone says by at least 100 times? Which would you prefer? Long distance flying with manual flexible steel that can cut through a handkerchief in midair, nanotechnology, or cataract surgery? These innovations seem contemporary, but they are all rather old, and they completely confound contemporary scholars. Many of these old inventions have unknown functions, and we have yet to learn how they were created or how prehistoric peoples who lacked modern technology could have created them. There are still a lot of unanswered questions. In this video, we will be sharing the most mysterious ancient technologies scientists can't explain. The mother of ancient high technology was the Antikythera device. A curious object that looked to be the world's first computer was discovered in 1900 by divers diving into a shipwreck off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. It was a metal disc with a sophisticated gearing mechanism that appeared to be older than 2,000 years. Researchers have worked for decades to solve the Antikythera device's riddles, but they have yet to learn how to operate it or what it does. It might have been related to the zodiac signs, moon phases, and solar and lunar eclipses. We don't know, though. An Ancient Greek Invention Using a Steam Engine The ancient Greek wind god Aeolos inspired the name of the Aeolipile. Heron Alexandrinus, also called the Hero of Alexandria, is credited with creating it. The Aeolipile had a sphere and steam-shooting nozzles. The nozzle steam produced the torque required for the sphere to spin on its axis. The sphere would eventually rotate steadily at a maximum speed of 1500 rotations per minute. The Arab polymath Taki al-Din reinvented the steam engine in 1577. The first calendar may be 10,000 years old. During a National Trust for Scotland-led dig in Aberdeenshire in 2004, a calendar that belonged to a Stone Age population 10,000 years ago was discovered. The calendar is a 50-meter-long scroll of parchment that displays solar months and lunar phases. The entire parchment shows a year's worth of lunar and solar cycles, but it was sufficiently accurate for users to readjust their lunar and solar calendars yearly. To match the moon phases, the calendars used 10-day weeks with roughly three every month. Ancient Rome Utilized Nanotechnology The Lycurgus Cup, a 1600-year-old Roman chalice that seemed to change color depending on the light, was purchased by the British Museum in London in the 1950s. It would have been jade green if lighted from behind, however, if lit from the front, it was dark blood red. The cause of this occurrence baffled researchers at the British Museum. Researchers looking at pieces of the cup that had cracked in the 1990s discovered the solution in a long-ago application of nanotechnology. Less than one thousandth the size of a grain of salt, the gold particles used by the Roman artisans to construct the cup were barely 50 nanometers across. The accuracy of the craftsmanship suggests that the Romans had mastered nanotechnology when the cup was made. The first earthquake detector may be 2,000 years old. The polymath Zhang Heng created a six-foot-wide, enormous metal tank in ancient China to be used as an earthquake detector. Its exterior was covered with eight dragons, each with a bronze marble in its mouth. The balls would get loose during an earthquake, at which point the dragons would fling them into the waiting mouths of bronze toads. Chinese observers who utilized this seismoscope got surprisingly accurate information, even though it could not anticipate earthquakes. They acquired information akin to what current geologists seek and could identify earthquakes as far away as Vietnam. The oldest telescope could be 3,000 years old. Galileo, you may leave. In 1850, archaeologists excavating in modern-day Iraq's Assyrian ruins discovered a 3,000-year-old rock crystal lens. Since its discovery, scientists have tried to determine how it works. It could be a three times magnification magnifier. The sun's rays may have been focused by a burning glass in order to ignite a fire. However, some academics think that the Nimrod lens was truly a component of a prehistoric telescope. 
The sophisticated astronomical knowledge of the Assyrians and Galileo's claim that the ancients had to have possessed telescopes might be explained by this. The ancient Romans made better concrete than we do. Ancient Romans made considerable use of concrete in their construction projects, which was superior to modern concrete in terms of quality and environmental impact. They combined lime with volcanic rock before adding seawater to make their concrete. The salty water caused a chemical reaction that strengthened the material greatly. Analysis of the ancient concrete's chemical and molecular composition indicated that it included minerals that may be utilized to construct contemporary high-performance concrete. While contemporary concrete is made to last 50 years, Roman-era concrete has survived for more than 2,000 years, frequently submerged. The ancients were more skillful than us at metal coatings. Today, everything from DVDs to sculptures to solar cells and technical devices is covered in metal coatings. However, the employment of metal coatings is by no means a recent development, and certain discoveries suggest that the ancients employed technologies that far surpassed our own. The ancient metallurgists were able to pound metals into exceedingly thin sheets before attaching them to sculptures, jewelry, and other objects despite their lack of extensive knowledge of metals' chemical and physical properties. The incredibly thin metal gilding adhered to the surface even with mercury. Navigation involved the use of a magical gem. The ancient Norse people spoke of a mystical diamond that could tell where the sun was even when it was hidden, allowing sailors to navigate the open seas precisely. While tales of such a jewel would seem as mythical as Thor's hammer, a 2013 finding proved they were real. The legendary sunstone was constructed of calcite, a crystal that could locate the sun even when clouds hit it. The key to its success was its capacity to double refract sunlight, allowing precise navigation. It may have appeared to the ancients who used the stone as magic. We still can't decipher the manuscript of Voynich. Wilfred Voynich, a Polish-American collector and antiquarian book dealer, bought a weird manuscript in 1912, and anybody who has tried to examine it has been perplexed by it ever since. A book from the 14th century known as the Voynich Manuscript is written in an unintelligible code and is covered in hand-drawn images. Researchers speculate that the book may be an early literature on pharmacology written in code to hide its recipes from the prying eyes of the church because many of the images appear to be of plants. The code used to write the text has baffled even the most avid code breakers, and many of the visuals are plain odd. The first battery may be 2,000 years old. In 1936, the Baghdad battery was found in a Paleolithic settlement outside Baghdad, modern-day Iraq. Several batteries were present, each made out of a copper cylinder running the length of a clay pot. The cylinder contained an iron rod secured within the copper with asphalt. One of the scientists who carried out the excavation proposed that the unusual clay jars were old batteries from 1938. About 10 years later, investigations showed that the pots produced 2 volts of electricity when filled with an electrolyte fluid, proving this notion correct. However, we are still determining what these old batteries powered. The ancient Greek navy may have had proto-napalm bombs. One of the terrifying weapons deployed by American soldiers in the Vietnam War was napalm. People in the United States angrily reacted against the war after seeing images of communities on fire and children fleeing its wrath by running naked through the streets. But it's possible that the infamous Greek fire, which obliterated ships, involved napalm used by the Greeks. The anecdotal evidence of the incendiary Greek fire is consistent with experiments showing that naphtha, derived from light crude oil combined with pine resin, can completely consume a wooden ship in seconds. That is all for this video, and we will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time!